Bright stands for realising increased photosynthetic efficiency. And we want to do this to sustainably increase the yields of our crops. This is a large multinational project involving partners in the US, in Australia, in the UK and in China. The project is sponsored by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Foundation for Food and Agricultural Research and the UK Department for International Development. The aim of this project is to increase the efficiency with which our crops use the sunlight and convert that into sugars and therefore food for us. Our aim is to increase the yields for small farmers, smallholder farmers, particularly in Africa, and our target crop is cowpea, which is grown by many millions of them. Photosynthesis is a complex process involving a number of important component processes. Now, this project brings together expertise in the various sub-processes to tackle the tasks at hand. Our particular focus is on the enzyme Rubisco. This is the enzyme that uh, catalyzes the assimilation of CO2 from the atmosphere into sugars. Now the enzyme is not that efficient at doing it and although it's essential for fueling life we have identified ways in which we believe its performance can be increased. One particular aspect we want to improve about Rubisco is how fast it responds to light. So in the field, leaves are not in constant light. In fact, they experience dramatic changes in the light environment. And this is because of cloud cover, wind, and even the sun movement throughout the day. So the leaves can be in the shade and then all of a sudden they are in the light. When leaves are in the shade, the activity of Rubisco is very low. But when leaves transition to a higher light level, Rubisco activity increases. Now there is natural variation in cowpea genotypes for how fast Rubisco activity can increase. And we can measure the speed of activation of Rubisco by using gas exchange measurements in cowpea plants growing in the glasshouse. Our expertise is on identifying and understanding the regulation of Rubisco activity in response to light. In the glasshouse, we take leaf samples from our cowpea plants grown under specific conditions of light. Then in the laboratory, we extract the proteins from these leaf samples and we use these extracts with our proteins to measure the activity of Rubisco. We use a specific assay and an adaptation of this assay to look at not only the Rubisco activity, but also its interaction with its molecular chiropractor Rubisco activase. Rubisco activase is an important protein that activates Rubisco in this light induction process. So it's really key that we understand natural variation in Rubisco activase if we want to improve this process. In our controlled growth environments, we are able to rapidly and repeatedly grow multiple cowpea cultivars in order to study their photosynthetic induction. In parallel with understanding the molecular controls of this photosynthetic induction, we are working with partners like the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture in Africa to screen diversity panels and rapidly identify natural variation in rates of induction. Our aim is to identify cultivars of cowpea that are characterized by faster or slower Rubisco uh, activation responses and we can then try to identify what exactly is in the Rubisco and Rubisco activase genes and proteins and use genetic engineering in order to link these differences at the level of the proteins with the differences we observe in our cultivars. It's really important for our project that the research that we do is translated and we're going to do this by working with local breeders. The very first thing that we want to do is test that the results that we get in the glasshouse and the growth chambers here at Lancaster are replicated when we go to the field. Then once we've established that, then we can use the genetic markers that we've got and the physiological traits that we've identified and pass those over to the breeders to use in their breeding programs and that way we can make sure that the research we do gets into the hands of the smallholder farmers in sub-Saharan Africa.